Okay, so Roberto, I don't know how much you remember from last night, but you taught me an interesting theory about the caveman. Yeah. How he was taught to use his two hemispheres. Yes, something like that. Yes, yeah, something like that. And I would like uh, you to repeat that theory. Well, actually, this is a, on, you, you don't have really a theory you know, for me, but you have just a sort of impressionistic picture because... Yeah. What I, I'm trying to get, at the end, you told me that uh, that's why we use uh, alcohol. To yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. because I was using alcohol in that moment. <laughs> yes, and that's the part I'm interested the most, because I fear something, I feel something common with alcohol and uh, playing games in that sense. If yes. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, actually, the basic theory is that once upon a time, when the man was uh, living in the caves, you know, the organization of the mind was completely different from the one that we are experiences, uh, experiencing in the present. So this ancient, uh, you know, grandparents of us were actually um, uh, they didn't have a, an awareness like we have now because awareness is just a, a metaphoric space in which you place all the things you know that you know and an analog of all the things that you know this means a metaphor of all the things that you know placed in a, in a specialization of the time this means that time you can't really understand time until you represent it in your mind as a space so that weeks months years and centuries actually are a sort of, of bidimensional or two-dimensional map, but actually a spatial map. In this map, you put the analog of uh, the things that you know. You put the analog of uh, even analog of concepts, you know. And finally, you put the analog of yourself. This means that kind of mysterious uh, entity that you call I. Okay, all in all ancient literature, you didn't have I as a figure. In, uh, you don't have it in the Bible, you don't have it in the Ilias, you don't have it in all the... Uh, they are only description of other people doing something, you know, but nobody say, I do that. Yes, because it's strictly forbidden in the Hebrew religion to say, I, because the only I is God. Yes, they, uh, they this, uh, yes the, the, uh, this is another trace of the fact that it was the period of the emerging of conscience and the emerging of the concept of I and the conserv conservatory part of society were trying, you know, not having this element emerging. So in the absence of I, you know, everything was continuous, uh, continues to be like it was before. But uh, this was destined to finish, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, kind, that kind of, uh, of uh, society uh, was simply too complex, you know, to survive with uh, the same uh, mental architecture that they had. But maybe we should talk about this architecture because this is the real science fictional element. Uh, the thing that nobody knows, nobody teaches into universities and uh, nobody dares to imagine because it's so alien uh, compared to our actual experience of ourselves, you know. And it's funny because you have science fiction writers imagining an uh, 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 extraterrestrial form of life and thinking and then the same people are often, I don't say always of course, unable even to imagine what they have been before. This means what hand mankind has been uh, just a few thousand years ago. This means the same brain but a different software and a different organization of the way to treat information. This means a completely different mind and a completely different way to perceive and interpret reality. Different in what way? Because, okay, they didn't have this analog of I. They didn't have actually a specialization even of time. Uh, this means that uh, they didn't make plans for years, you know, they didn't, uh, uh, they didn't uh, uh, foresee their pension, you know, they didn't even make plans for death or for after death because death was not the real concept, you know. Mm -hmm. you, uh, they, they, they were probably aware of some of them dying, you know, like even animals are, you know. You have a cat and if a cat le uh, loses a kitten, you perceive that a cat is aware of something, mm -hmm. you know, of death of the kitten, you know. But this was not referring to themselves, you know. They were not referring for... E even a few centuries ago, you know, when you are reading the literature, you don't 
read so often, you know, about people that saying, I'm going to die. They were saying, I'm going to war and I may not come back, you know. They were not the concept of, I will die there. There was a concept, I will not come back, you know. So the concept of your life finishes, that's it, you know. So the death is, we, we are now seeing death like an action. While they were seeing like death just like, okay, I stopped doing something, you know. But it was not so dramatic like you could see now. You, know, yes, you could see yes, now. Yes, it's quite yes, interesting. Yes. It's a little. But now we go back. At that time, there was not all of these kind of things because there was no uh, specialization of uh, time. So people didn't distinguish very well from the far past or the far future. You know, they didn't put the chronology of events very clearly. And actually. Uh, they they were they had a big the good hardware they had the same hardware that we have now, but with some software differences you know for example uh, let's go really in the caves you know you have uh, in the cave uh, some people the genius of the tribe you know that suddenly invented the fact that if you if you put two stones together uh, then one of them gets uh, like a knife you know. And this, of course, was a genius because only a genius could uh, imagine, you know, like also you can see in 2001 Odyssey, Space Oddity, you know, uh, the, yeah, yeah. the movie of Stanley Kubrick, you know, that somebody suddenly understood that you could use matter as a tool, you know. Uh, and in that moment, this person was a complete genius. And then the others started to copy, you know. The problem is that, you know, let's make an example of building a knife. When you start to build a knife, you need some time, you know, to build it. And uh, if you if you take a dog and you train a dog, you know, to take you uh, a piece of wood that you launch, you know, you launch it, you can train it, and he will always take it, you know. Only if he acts in the presence. You cannot tell to your dog, no matter how much how good you can train him, tomorrow morning at seven o'clock, I, I expect you to take me your uh, this piece of wood here. He will not do it. Why? Because actually it will disappear from his mind, you know. Uh, he has a mind because if you tell it, he goes and takes back, you know. But this mind, in a way, works only for a short period, you know. And then in the moment he loses contact with what he's doing, then he stops doing yes, it. Yes. So uh, human beings were something like that at the time because no matter if they were so intelligent, but even they were living in the present. And so you. One human being could teach to another the way to do something, you know, for example, to make a knife with a stone. But then, when the person would just think of something else, to see if, you know, something flying in the sky or what, he would completely forget about what he was doing and then starting, you know, to pick uh, uh, flowers and eat them. So uh, you had, you know, to uh, to force this person, you know, to continue to to do what he was doing. And for this reason, you know, uh, generally. You know, uh, there were already a proto language. You know, they were they were already emitting sounds. You know, and even animals uh, communicate with languages. You know, you have dolphins, which has a lot of semantics, so yes, yes. they have a, a language. We don't understand anything about that because we are not enough intelligent. But they they communicate between them, and the same were the the the, the first uh, main. They had a lot of meanings. You know, for example, let's suppose that the meaning like "do it more sharper," you know, was <coughs> something like that. So in the moment in which uh, the chief of the tribe, you know, teaches to somebody to make it more sharp, you know, when he sees that the person stops, he makes Arr! and the person starts to learn, you know, then when he hears Arr! then he has to continue to beat, you know, the stones and make it sharper. The matter is that the people were in more intelligent than dogs now. So actually the right part of the brain, the hemisphere, the right hemisphere, which is the one that actually uh, is uh, understanding what you have to do and taking decisions and understanding the the whole complexity of the things that generally are uh, relating to you. Uh, he knew, actually, he learned that he had to continue, you know, to do this gesture, you know, in order to have the knife after maybe eight hours of work. But the left part of the brain, which was the one that actually was acting, because the, 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 the function are divided into two hemispheres, the left hemisphere, he would forget to continue, you know. Yeah. And so there should be the, the right hemisphere of the brain had the necessity to tell to the left hemisphere, to the brain, you know, how, uh, that he had to continue to do it. And how would he tell it? Through the language. This means just by repeating digitally, in a sort of digital recording, you know, the exact voice of the chief of the tribe that have taught him. Since 
he had learned to do it like you teach to a dog, you know, with Pavlovian uh, conditioning. This means uh, at a certain sound, you have a function, you know. You condition the creature, you know, to respond with a gesture, with function to a certain sound. At the same time, when he was hearing, <coughs> he knew that he had to beat the, the two stones, you know. The matter is, what happens if the chief of the tribe is not there? He has taught to your right hemisphere how to do it. But then the right hemisphere has to say it to the left hemisphere when the left hemisphere just start to pick flowers and eat them because he, he forgets about what he was doing before. And so the right hemisphere, which is the wisdom of the person, even now, it suddenly uh, tells to the left hemisphere, <coughs> the left hemisphere hears the voice, which is exactly the same of the chief of the tribe, and starts to beat the two stones. This little example is just to say that actually uh, after a while all the possible function in a little tribe and then in a bigger bigger society even uh, up to age the Egyptians actually it was structured you know in a very complex uh, uh, concatenations you know of verbal messages that were triggering functions so that actually uh, the rest the right hemisphere of the brain of all the people was learning all the things that were related with uh, the uh, function of their society and then according to the need of the uh, single uh, situations the right hemisphere was just telling to the left hemisphere in clear plain words what the left hemisphere had to say and these words were coming from what the right hemisphere had learned from his teacher from the chief of the tribe from the laws and so on so how come we don't hear voices because after a while this kind of um, this way of <laughs> organizing society has uh, collapsed a lot of times in the Mesopotamia of uh, the ancient times we have a lot of, of, of civilization that suddenly collapsed with no apparent reason the reason actually is not apparent because we didn't watch into their heads the problem was that simply this hierarchy of voices that was coming up from the king that was getting it from the god uh, simply at, if for unknown reason collapsed because it was too complicated and it didn't imply awareness and specialization of time and all these kind of elements so they were not human in the way we intend them now and so now and then simply the complexity was too high and everything was breaking down and you had cows and cows and cows for uh, decades and even centuries and then a new civilization would rise and so on at a certain time uh, in during one of these catastrophes actually somebody for the first time in his brain invented the specialization of time and uh, started to make projects and the first project that he did was to kill all the enemies of the first war that he had and this was is known as uh, the uh, is the most cruel reign of all this ancient Mesopotamian civilization I don't remember the name mm -hmm. now and this king you know actually was the first probably that stopped to hear the voices and actually was making plans this means he integrated the functions of the two hemispheres in a way that allowed him you know to make much much more efficient uh, planes and action this kind of new architecture of the mind actually infected then uh, people and mankind but it was not a sudden moment this means some people started to have this kind of specialization of time which is our actual um, uh, uh, awareness now the way our mind works now and other people continue to hear the vo voices mm -hmm. and these people were the prophets <laughs> the people that steering were continuously to hearing the voices and were telling to people what to do according to the voices they were hearing and since listening to all these uh, uh, voices was a very safe system, you know, to know, always know what to do, it was a big stress, you know, for the people that didn't hear them anymore, you know, uh, to take decisions. And so they were looking for the people that were hearing the voices that were apparently so calm, you know, and so sure of what they had to do because they, hear, they were hearing the voices. Not the religious people. Actually. Exactly, you know. In nowadays. I exactly, something like that. But now it has changed even more because now nobody hears the voices anymore. Now you only hear actually the sensation which was associated with the words when you were hearing them, which was a very strong one, which is a very, I would say, divine sensation, you know. 
and uh, this is the magic you know of the human mind you know for this reason a lot of people has very deep uh, internal sensation and other don't you know because uh, not all the minds are structured in the same time and, and what about us what was uh, what about the people who don't hear the voices who has to take responsibility yes, for their actions this is a always anyway a stress because it's very you know in the moment in which you have the sensation that there is an external entity which is responsible for what you do for all what you do and all the ancient literature is a demonstration that it was like that because you had all the literature that told that the Ilias, the Bible and uh, all the old uh, Gilgamesh and all the uh, uh, old stuff uh, tell us about societies in which people were hearing voicing telling them what to do and other people were seeing hallucinations appearing and telling them what to do. This was a way of externalize, you know, the problem. This means they were imagining that something outside was determining all their life, mm -hmm. and this uh, was uh, it was working. It did work for a long time. Uh, now the complete absence of all this hallucination in the voice and the merging of the personal responsibility, because in the moment you specialize time, you have an identity, you remember your past, and you foresee your future, and then you start to be worried about your future what it didn't happen before because uh, and you know that the mistakes that you did are have still an effect and will have an effect the, all this is a big big uh, stress and since this change happened uh, just a few thousand years ago we are just in the beginning of the change of uh, between one paradigm and the other one between one way of our mind to work and the next one and so we are we are now in a period of nostalgia of the ancient period of the voices that were solving all our problems and so now we invent a lot of systems that uh, should allow us to reduce you know uh, the quantity of awareness that we have so to switch off you know this left hemisphere or whatever it is actually that uh, makes of things special in a specialized metaphoric space what, what are these what kind of systems for example alcohol it's a uh, one i like it very much this is my preferred you know this means you drink and then it, it's not a chance that when you drink you forget the past and you don't worry about the future what does it mean simply that the metaphor of the past and the future the specialization of the past of the future disappear from your mind just like it has been for thousands and thousands of years up to a few thousand years ago this means actually you go back to a previous way of uh, existing it's like all the people thousands of years ago were were uh, drunken actually or even better said the worst schizophrenic because this is actually the the sort of fossil the mental fossil that we see in society now because uh, schizophrenic people actually are exactly the kind of bicameral mind person that existed thousands of years ago. These people are the living example of a person that existed two, three thousand years ago. Uh, the pe in these people, the specialization of time in their mind disappears, breaks down, and they go back to the previous state of organization of the mind, which is a mind populated with voices, with no specialization of time, and all the things that we have been talking about. We call them schizophrenic and think that they are uh, that they are um, that they are ill, but they are not ill. They are simply out of uh, our actual uh, way of working. That's, you know, it's a bit wild. You're saying all our ancients are were schizophrenic. All our ancient has the a mind that was working like the schizophrenic mind now, but the problem of the schizophrenic is that. Uh, their way of perceiving the world is not condivised by the others and this makes them big problems. I remember schizophrenic people telling me did you hear what this was speaking and he was speaking about an hallucination. Mm -hmm. If I would have been 2000 years ago I would tell him yes and I would start to hear the voice myself because we would all hallucinate the same thing. Now our hallucination is TV. So if I tell you, did you see the last um, uh, what what Tom Cruise was doing last year? We uh, you know in that cliff uh, or in that uh, car you know, and you say, oh yes, it's grotesque. None of us has seen Tom Cruise, but we have a magic box which reproduces the hallucinations that we both see. And for this reason, now society works perfectly because we have the same hallucination for everybody. But the hallucination because none of them has ever touched or anything else Tom, with Tom Cruise. So, uh, but we have the same uh, myths, the same um, idols, you know. And so if I, if I talk to you about Tom Cruise or Sylvester Stallone, you know what I'm talking about. But the schizophrenic, he talks about his 
hallucinations and you don't understand and this puts him out of society he's not functional anymore his way of working is not functional if everybody would would be uh, schizophrenic after a while they would organize in a society after a while not immediately because they should have in a way to develop the common divinities first we have developed them through TV <laughs> so and uh, what you said about alcohol do you think it can uh it can be done with uh, imagination by playing games by playing roles it can be done in any possible way you can done it with buddhism uh, just uh, putting um, and to start you know to create you know with a mantra with uh, or something like that or with another kind of uh, mantra or like like um, you know this kind of deep frequencies all the way to induce a trance will lower you know uh, your awareness your specialization of time and space and everything and then it will rise the activity of the right hemisphere and after a while you know you will uh, you will enter into an altered state of mind that uh, in which you will feel more comfortable why because for thousands of years it has been like that Alcohol is a way, music is another, if you go to a disco and you have house music, doom, 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 it's exactly like in a little village in Congo where they're making doom, 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 and after a while they lose, you know, the trace of, uh, you know, awareness, you know, that we have now. So there is all a hunting about losing awareness. I don't know with role game playing because I didn't do it yet, you know, but with alcohol, with drugs, uh, and uh, with music, and also with not eating, you know, a lot, you know, all this kind of Mexican uh, uh, legends about eating peyote and not eating and then having hallucinations. Yes, it works, of course, because every time you induce a very, very, very strong stress to your body, then you start to have hallucinations. Also, high fever creates hallucinations and it would not make a sense of if, for, for this hallucination to exist if it wouldn't be a function that it already in your brain. I remember when I was a child I had 40 degrees fever Celsius you know and uh, I was trembling and then somebody was appearing in my room and it was real I still remember it it was real it was an hallucination but it was real and then what was happening that my mother was calming me down and say it doesn't exist it's only in your head, it's an hallucination. And so, year after year, they disappeared. Mm -hmm. But if my mother would say, hey, yes, and what did it say? And I would say, and he told me that you have to kill my father. He said, oh, yes, and he killed my father. Then after a while, I would start to believe in these hallucinations. And this is how it was working thousands of years ago. People had hallucinations, but everybody believed in that. And so, they were starting where you were a child and they were continuing. Now they only appear when you are under very strong stress. This means when you are very ill, high fever or strong drugs or big religious trance. In this case you have mystic experience which are just the right hemisphere that awakes and suddenly speaks and tells something to the left one in a way that the left one can hear or see actually but it is an intrapsychic phenomenon it is nothing supernatural <laughs> since simply we didn't measure it we didn't uh, we have not the instrument to 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 objectify it in, in a way or in another i don't know if my english makes sense you know because I, this does. is not my i'm afraid it does uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah so there aren't if you are any. afraid this means you are understanding <laughs> I make it like that so the people that don't believe it feel more safe because they think I'm mad in talking about that. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I meant when I said I'm afraid. No, not uh, A bit confusing, but uh, yeah, we talked uh, about that earlier. But so what you're saying is uh, there aren't in this world there aren't such things as uh, supernatural things. All we do is trying to get the responsibility from ourselves. Well, so there are supernatural things, but not in the sense that uh, many people think. This means there are not, by definition, there are no supernatural things, but there are things that we didn't explain yet. For example, communication, communication, uh, telepathic communication exists at a certain, in a certain uh, way. What do you mean? Uh, it happens very often, you know, that uh, people refer that you know they feel very very sorry they have a big pain inside and then they discover and then in, the, in that exact moment somebody was dying which was very related to them you know I have heard 
personally a lot of stories of people you know that had a very deep uh, related uh, relative you know that died and in that moment they perceived it so even through thousands of kilometers you know this means uh, it happened even to me by the way this means uh, i dreamt about the death of a relative in the night it happened something like that you know and but this this is something that actually uh, there is a sort of intrapsychic communication you know which in a way it's nothing particularly magic it's simply something which has not been described and yeah. should not be also overestimated you know because yeah. if in the moment you 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 notice that something that you cannot measure and verify and describe happens then other people start to say so if this is true then you know the powers of the mind no 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 let's keep it down you know this means they are th uh, 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 let's say super normal this means normal but in a that has not been explained yet yes, phenomenon but let's not exaggerate this means we don't have to confuse hallucinations with supernatural so if you see somebody appearing that's not supernatural that's something that happened in your brain on the other side there, there can be you know telepathic experience or something like that but slightly telepathic you know I'm not speaking yes, yes. about you know something you know that turns science fiction to be real necessarily you know you have to always to distinguish it's not like black and white it's not that everything is right and everything is wrong you know uh -huh. there are bits of reality in uh, the craziest uh, theories but not that not too crazy you know? mm -hmm. what do you think uh, is that uh, yeah is there right or wrong but is this uh, right that uh, that you and me are trying s so hard not to take responsibility for our actions it's not it's not right it's not wrong you know the matter is uh, we are just uh, the mirror of the chromosomes and uh, the experiences that uh, shape us so uh, we are in this phase of evolution Evolution is not something that we are not a, a ultimate product. There is not a product. Let's make human beings. That's the end product. <laughs> so now it, you're blaming me, blaming the evolution. No, the matter is no. The matter is that evolution is not something like let's make human being and they make the project and then here you have it. It's <laughs> something that is becoming, it's moving, it's changing, and uh, we are not a stable uh, entity like, for example, sharks. Sharks exist for 200 millions of years, if I'm not wrong, or even more, I don't know. But there are animals that exist for millions of years. These animals are stable. And if you look at them, every function in a way is perfectly adapted to environment, or it was before the appearance of human being. But uh, because a lot of animals are disappearing because they're not anymore compatible with life, since yeah. human being is there, like, like uh, elephants and rhinoceros and a lot of animals that we are killing. Uh, so they are not any may any more adequate to exist because they are not they don't have the tools to protect themselves from us. Apart from these animals, the animals that are stable for 200 million of years, you know, they are perfect. You know, they are perfectly inserted into the ecological niche. Human beings are not like that. You know, they have changed very, very, very much in the last uh, million of years, just one million of years, and actually even in the last 200,000 years, uh, 2,100 years, they have changed. You know, and psychically speaking, they have changed even in the last 2,000 years. So, and if this you don't believe, just see the, con the, the consequences. You know, technology is just a mirror of the uh, development of human mind. I mean, it's not something that just happens, you know. It's just uh, the symptom of development of human mind. It wouldn't exist electronics without human mind. So, <clears throat> you have something that evolves very, very fast. Human beings have started to become monogam but they didn't end the process and so you have the parody of uh, marriage you know which pretend to be uh, monogam and then everybody splits at least in Italy and in most of the uh, so-called modern countries so the people put together and then they split after that they swore that it will be forever so everything becomes completely surreal uh, because there are contradictions because uh, human being is not a stable element we have teeth that we don't need and uh, that were killing our ancestors up to 100 years ago because one of the main causes of death was the teeth you know because they were starting to rotten they were infecting your blood and would you would die because of septicemia i don't know it's called this kind of infection that you have 
uh, in the in the blood coming from another one. So we, we, people are dying because of tooth and appendix, you know, this kind of stuff, uh, which are not useful anymore. This would disappear probably in the next few ten thousand years. But now we stopped evolution because we invented medicines, <laughs> and from that moment on, you know, only you know the o the, the ill people, you know, survive, you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, not only actually, but uh, there is no natural selection anymore. So uh, not only we <coughs> stopped it to uh, we were not finishing our process of uh, adaptation, but we interrupted it. You Couldn't know, it be uh, that the medicines uh, are part of natural selection. It could be or not. Who knows? The matter is that they are until they exist. But on the other side, you see that antibiotics are not a real solution, or because, for example, medicine don't put away your teeth, so your teeth will continue to rotten in your mouth, like it shouldn't happen in nature, you know, because we have more teeth than we actually need. So we still have pieces of ourselves that try to kill us. We just protect us with medicines, but. Uh, uh, you know, they are of course part of the, of the evolutionary system, but then, then this means that we make a symbiosis with the kind of uh, uh, microorganisms that live in the medicines, you know, because this means that, uh, which is a, a sort of, uh, uh, of, of mushroom actually, you know, <laughs> uh, the antibiotics. So, um, and mushroom is not the right word, but I, I miss it in English. So, um, we, we, we have a symbiosis with another form of life that protects us from our teeth. So, not to die from our own teeth, we have to take another form of life and put it to kill the bacteria that our teeth uh, host, you know. Yeah, I get the point, yeah. <laughs> you mind if I smoke? No, no, I like but it, uh, <laughs> because I'm a passive smoker. Oh, yeah. Then isn't it wet? Uh, who? Cold? Uh, who is wet? The bench. Oh, no. Uh, all right. Not that I know this. Okay. I hope I didn't make it wet. <laughs> yeah, I will soon. Yeah, I felt I, I felt it as a whole theory. Did oh, you? this was the just the edge of the iceberg. I have been talking random about something that we have been talking yesterday, but it didn't it went on tape, so now it's lost inside the the space. And uh, I said eventually something else, and I didn't repeat other things. So yeah, but it's, uh, it's just fragments of whatever. <laughs> I yeah. don't know if somebody will be able to extract information from the cocktail of words. Well, that I put it was it was the point I was looking for actually. He but looks puzzled. Puzzled. Me? Well, a part of you at least. Yeah, but I like to be confused, actually. Yeah. While you're confused... I should open an office and say, Roberto Quaglia, a professional confuser. <laughs> and then, like a psychotherapist, try to uh, theoretically <laughs> deconfuse people, you know. Uh, I, I should confuse them and, and charge double so much like a psychoanalyst. You, know, yeah, you seem so sure about your life. Come in here, have a seat. Oh, confuse you to everybody who wants his or her certainty is being destroyed, you know, is welcome. Just pay me for my efforts. In money or nature, whatever this means. I'm joking. Yeah, you always do, I guess. You know, yeah, I well, can't decide, but in the moment joking. you take too much seriously whatever you say or you think or you are, eventually you stop thinking and being and... and and imagine, imagining anything new, I mean, then you will start to become trapped by your own preconcepts uh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, the preconcepts which are not even your own, which are the preconcepts that other people put inside you. This means uh, beliefs, this means that actually you, you believe things instead of understanding them. Yeah. And it's better to ignore everything, you know, because this is the best condition, because you can eventually understand something. But the worst possible condition is the one of being convinced to have understood. That's the moment in which you renounce to further develop. In the maximum confusion is the condition of maximum potentiality. So if you completely are amazed about whatever and you don't really understand and you feel mystery in whatever you are thinking at, that's the symptom you are 
the most alive and uh, you are uh, potentially uh, evolving into whatever this means <laughs> which is typically of being alive because uh, yeah. point, uh, when is, point is not a thing to get point is something to look for yeah well <laughs> actually you never should Robert Shackley one of my favorite authors that I would recommend to everybody once said uh, that uh, in one of his most controversial books uh, options he said uh, something like uh, what there were two people talking one of them meets the other and say what are you looking I don't know, but when I will see it, I will recognize it. And you? I don't know, but maybe that's better so. Because uh, knowing what you're looking for can obstacle your activity of looking for it. Yeah. So, it's, if, you, if you know what you're looking for it, you lose all the rest. The, the way, is, the path is the way, not the target, something like that. It sounds a little zen, but the, the concept is, if you, if you, to look for something is great. The real problem is when you find it. That's your death, mentally speaking. So, you have uh, n not to find what you're looking for, and more than that, not to know what you're looking for. Because the risk is that if you know what you're looking for, you might find it. That's and you may not want it. Yeah. Nobody could really desire to find what he or she is looking for because he would discover that everything is something else because we only experience the metaphor of things and so even our wildest dreams are only the metaphor of what we really want and when we find them we are not satisfied and this is the proof because we were desiring and wishing for the metaphor of something. And then we find something which is not its own metaphor. And we look for something else. <laughs> not even in that kind. Uh, okay, it's finished. Okay, but it's okay. It's like life. You don't <laughs> die in the right, you, in the moment when there is written the end. <laughs> Wow, oh, what nice. is your point? We should go down. Maybe. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't you need to go back? Uh, we mm. have another... Um, I think we have another 15 minutes all together. Oh, okay. okay. This means 10 minutes movie. We, 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 if, if you don't mind. I don't I mind, I like it very much. I ages, you know. Huh? I, w I could listen to that <laughs> for ages. You know, it's strange. Uh, we. <coughs> I suggest you to read a lot of Robert Shackley and Philip Dick. <laughs> yeah. Robert wrote Shackley is my favorite. Yeah, I wrote it down. Uh, Robert Shackley was my archetype, which means as a child we started to be. As a child we started to be. I, I started, you know, not a child, when I was 18 or something like that, I was very fond of him. And then we became friends after many years. You did? Yes, I contacted him and after a while he came to Europe and we spent two months together. Mm -hmm. One time, one month and one time, another oh. month. And now he wants to come back here. I have a question. So, you talked about uh, the last, uh, Well, the problem is that... Uh, the, prob the problem is that... Uh, it's very, very, very difficult, you know... Um, to, to survive not accepting the fact of not knowing what you're looking for. So actually, uh, not to get mad after a while, you have to, to think, I'm looking for that, I'm looking for the other one. The matter is, uh, you, can, you may do it, it's human. But it's even more human on a higher level, not to take yourself completely seriously. On that way, you will avoid some pain when you will discover that what you have been looking for was uh, just a metaphor of what you were looking for. And on the other side, you know, the more question you put yourself, the more you know. The more you can uh, avoid the, to find what you're looking for, the more you develop. Yes, there are pe a lot of people who have very clear idea of what they want, and then you see the difference between them and the people that don't want what, don't know what they want. You know, there is no comparison actually, and in complexity, I'm speaking. I'm not want to, to, willing to make a, a, a hierarchy of values. I'm only making a hierarchy of complexity. 
and uh, complexity is pro is typical of life so if you consider life to be something with a value the more something is complex the more it's alive the more has a meaning in the scale of values that you have defined as valid the one of life if life has a meaning but on the other side that's the only interesting thing in universe because actually alternative is the radiation the background radiation which is the easiest uh, form of something existing in this universe which is not so interesting and for this reason according to our actual knowledge the universe abandoned it very soon after the so-called big bang that i don't really believe in so uh, the radiation which becomes matter which becomes even more complex matter which coagulates into galaxies which produces stars that has no other purpose than burning and producing heavier metals and then which are not even those enough and then you need stars to explode in order to produce gold and all these other noble metals and then when you finally have a wide range of cards to play your whole game you create you know in a planet uh, human beings and uh, houses and buildings and computers using all these elements built in the universe in the previous eras so actually this seems the tendency in the universe to create complexity it makes no sense but it's uh, it it i mean we 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 have a problem we can only judge this through our brains and our brain is our limit is our instrument so we have a so called epistemological problem because we can only think what our brain can think so maybe for this reason we consider it complexity and as a consequence life as something meaningful but it's because our brain can't come to another conclusion so we have to accept it and say okay let's simulate that this as a sense so that suppose that complexity is better than simplicity and if this is true then complex people are more interested than simple one or they should be maybe they create more problems for this reason sometimes simple people are more easy but you get bored so what are you talking about did i confuse you i hope so this is my purpose <laughs> if i confuse people then i think i done something good and don't because somebody else will make them more sure about something and sell them certainties at a high price afterwards anyway <laughs> and they want it or not what do you do with the expression let sleeping dogs lie let sleeping dogs lie there are some things uh, shouldn't be bought up there are certain people better left alone definitely let them play let them no let definitely them i i the matter is uh, it's uh, i don't like you know fundamentalism uh, this means converting people to any kind of other kind uh, state that they are this means uh, this is wrong i mean it makes no sense it's uh, it can be useful of course if then they become your slaves but it's another kind of game uh, intellectually speaking it's terrail it, if you want to convince somebody it means just that you have uh, to convince you, you need a pretext to convince yourself that what you say is right when people struggle is never to convince the other is to prove to themselves that their vision of reality is true which is quite you know stupid actually so it makes no sense to convert the others and actually it's not even right because everybody has his own way and uh, since everything is completely illusionary and reality is a convention and we only experience the metaphor of reality and everything is by definition uh, illusionary then uh, let's have uh, everybody has the illusion that they prefer unless they are trying you know to 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 to, to damage you you know or to convert you that's another point you know then you have to defend yourself okay then the what's the what's the, what's the point of conversation what's the point of uh, connection that, between two there people? are two kind of possible conversation in which you play a finite game and in the other one an infinite game a finite game has rules and has a beginning and has an end and has a winner and has a loser in this case i'm trying to sell you a car 
no matter if the car is a concept or if it is a bitch yeah. <laughs> and I am somebody that sells sex in this case somebody else is in this case you know uh, you have a game a finite game and you can win or, or lose or you have an infinite game in which actually there is no beginning and there is no ending this is just the interaction between people and uh, you converse in a way that actually you don't really converse there is simply an exchange of information you want it or not you get surprised but what you say yourself this means you don't even government what you say because you don't have a target if you would have a target this means convince the other then uh, you could lose win or lose and anyway uh, the death of the talk would be included in the talk because you would not leave your argument but if the the, the, the speech is open this means there is no no finality this is important no finality in the speech then uh, the speech becomes the finality of itself and then uh, something very strange happens that you could call something like creative resonance because it's a sort of gestaltic uh, gain Gestalt is a German word that means, you know, the form of substance of something. So, this means that in this case, our conversation does not convince anybody about anything, but actually just only creates something that uh, is more than the sum of the thing that we have been, uh, that we would have talked separately, you understand? So, it's like uh, a, a metaphoric child is born, you know, which is a new concept that would have, could evaporate in a moment or not, or become, you know, a new philosophy, who knows? The met I'm now speaking theoretically. This means uh, people can conversate for the pleasure of seeing what happens by that. In this case, nobody is interested in demonstrating anything because this is the death of this kind of conversation. Or the people can conversate to protect their own vision of reality. And in this case, you have a struggle and trying to sell you my idea and you are trying to sell you mine. And nobody wins generally. Uh, and if it wins, it's another structure. Then you create hierarchies and you do other things. Uh, it's other kind of games, you know, which uh, the are the games that make society work. So I don't blame them too much because we would live in an anarchic uh, uh, confusion if these games would not exist. But they are intellectually relevant. They are only useful for uh, maintaining civilization uh, working and. Uh, for making it so that when you go to buy the bread, you find it. Because uh, without this kind of games, nothing would exist because everybody would stop to be what he's convinced to be. The lawyers would stop to be the lawyers, which would be very good, by the way. But uh, the people who made the bread would stop to be the people who made the bread because they would start to talk about something else. Yeah. And now, okay, I'm becoming more abstract, but uh, this is another con discussion, probably. Thank you very much. For what? <laughs> for all this. For the interview. I mean. Nah, it's just a flow of words, you know. <laughs> this means... Uh, <laughs> well, you they said this... Oh, they, they came th out through me, you know. <laughs> I listen also to them, so I appreciate them myself. Maybe I learned more than you, who knows. Yeah. Other people would ask me s other kind of questions and I, we would have had it speaking about football. It's unlikely, and in this case it would be worse. So, I, you could reasonably thank me if I could uh, have sold you something, but in the moment, and you, would, that you would like to have bought. But in the moment that actually something happened, it's like you look at the sunset and you say, thank you sunset for having sat down for me tonight. It's just something that happened, you know. And so words are something that happens or not. Yeah, conversation, if they happen, it has a sense that they happen. But I still gain knowledge from it here also. <laughs> and who tells you that I don't care? Knowledge myself in this kind of situation. So but, uh, this is what I call a, a creative resonance, you know, for some reason, you know. Yeah, I actually, would be surprised. Hmm? I would be surprised if you gain something. I don't gain it, you don't gain it from me and I don't gain it from you. We both gain it, you know, from whatever. I don't want to become spiritual, you know, but the uh, universe is evo evolving, uh, spiritual in a religious sense, let's say, uh, re spiritual in an intellectual sense has a sense, because life is spiritual, actually, uh, because it's not like a stone, so there is something that dif differences. Yes. But the matter is that actually 
um, actually the universe is evolving you know and you are just a place you are a place and in this place something happens sometimes happens something happens and sometimes the universe evolves there other moments it doesn't so uh, generally when you're very happy and something very creative happens this is the moment in which universe is evolving a little bit inside you too or more if you are completely bored and you are a universe is absent from you you get the point you are like an inert place of universe like a stone yeah. and you don't change universe is there but it's not evolving so when words happen this is just a symptom that the universe is evolving there a little bit so that's your theory of inspiration I guess. yes exactly but this is uh, inspiration yeah definitely this is just a place where the universe is doing something say, oh well that's a good place you know to make something happen and that's happening there you know and well, who knows why it's you know? not different at all as a as a guy with faith would say that uh, God is using me it, as, as his exactly instrument. we are all using metaphors you know and uh, I am using one metaphor he's uh, using another metaphor and they are not so distant because actually then reality is the same you know even though the metaphors in which we describe them can be so different you know but the matter is that if you go beyond the metaphor and you try to perceive you know the and you know there is also something said that the name of God cannot be pronounced you know? this is very profound because actually the problem is that generally in religions you pronounce it the matter is you cannot pronounce you know uh, this kind of uh, ultimate laws of universe whatever they are you know and uh, the moment you do which you pronounce you renounce to explore them you know? so it's very good you know to be spiritual without having a faith I don't know if I'm clear in what I say this means uh, uh, not to name what you are believing in, you know, and so you can enhance it more and more, you know, and uh, go deeper and deeper. deeper. Yeah. And uh, it's difficult because it doesn't happen always, it goes in clusters, and then you have periods in which you are a slave or all what you know, what, uh, what you have thought in the past, and you can't free yourself from that, and you start to believe to your hallucinations. But then something else happens, and again, you destroy a piece of your identity, which only initially is painful, but after a while it's a pleasure because it's equivalent to the evolution of the universe. Actually, a child, take a child. A child is a place where the universe is evolving a lot every day. And he always has some problem and he cries and so, because he has frustrations, because actually he, his reality is demolished every day. But only for this reason, is every day he falls down, his reality is demolished because actually it, he experienced the universe to be different from what he, he was. But this is a mistake, he learns from it and he evolves. You know? uh. And if you can have the force you know, to continuously look for mistakes, of course you cannot look for physical mistakes that would kill you, but you can yeah. look for intellectual mistakes. That's what you know? I try to uh, that is what I just found out, that if uh, something bad happens to you and your whole world falls apart, you can do two things, you can bury yourself under the ruins or you can build a whole new world. Yes, of exactly. The, of the ruins. And you can go on doing it more and more. There was a, a, a movie that I didn't see, but they told me about Zorba the Greek or something like that, where there was this person that builds the house. I don't know if it's true because they told me, but I like the story, even if it's <laughs> not true. Even uh, the person that builds for all his life or whatever a house, and then the house falls down, and then you know the music of Zorba the Greek. Yeah. This is very and uh, doom, doom, doom. Uh, okay, and then this person goes there, and then he starts to dance on the ruins of his life. I don't know if it is true, but if it's not true, we can do this movie because actually <laughs> this yeah, well, is it's uh, done, the matter. It's I, d I didn't see it, but if it is like they told me, you know. Uh, I like the story, how I has been told, uh, don't like me. I hope that it exists because I want, I want to see it, you know. Yes, and uh, it's very good because also this music of Zorba Grigik is the, is the music that starts very sad and in the way it becomes more uh, fast, it becomes uh, um, uh, the contrary of sad, you know, uh, you know, a good mood, you know. Yeah. But the, the, it joy. doesn't, yeah, a joy, you know, but it is not 
a difference in the music. The music is almost the same, it only accelerates the rhythm. So it's magic, a, a, a sequence of sounds that has opposite meanings according to the rhythm in which they happen. Yeah. And this is great, you know. And uh, so I like the idea of something that builds something and then it destroys and it starts again, you know, enjoying the demolition of all its life. Because anyway, life gets demolished. So since it happens in the last moment and it happens a lot, a lot of other times, it's better to learn how to enjoy this and to use this like a sort of humus where you can burn other pieces of you which can be more interesting and make your life more valuable, you know? I mean, more interesting and more, in, you know, something they say, okay, I died, but I, I left, I've lived a lot of lives, you know? instead of only one or even less. <laughs> something like that. I mean, something like that, you know. You don't have to trust it. <laughs> <laughs> Finding it out, you know, looking, searching. This is like a catalyzer. This means you have to consider communication is just only catalyzing in somebody else's thought. On the other side, I will tell you the last, the final things for now. And then we have to to move Go to the beauty contest. To the beauty contest. Uh, and uh, the matter is that actually I don't really believe in uh, communication in the sense that uh, somebody tells somebody something to somebody else. The meaning is in the destination. This means uh, I, what I told to you now, I could have told to somebody else and somebody else wouldn't have understood it and so I wouldn't have told it. This means that the only meaning that I am able to generate and to transmit is actually the meaning that is already there in the destination and I can only actually configure to get better the words so actually I act like an enzyme, a catalyzer You call it to life? Uh, I, I didn't, re I, no, no, it's already life I only give a form to it so I, I give to the other person the tools to put it together which are the words and the, the concepts which are combinations of words so that you get the concept you had the instinct uh, knowledge of exact all what I say because else you wouldn't have understood it else everybody would understand everything that everybody says and when the information arrives the information actually is just only the way to order the information mm -hmm. that you instinctively or already have because the universe has put it there somewhere and uh, has evolu developed it somewhere which is better because to put it is too mystical and uh, then you know you just have now the tools to order that you know and then uh, suddenly you recognize oh yes that's what I would have always been thinking or what I, I knew that was something right you recognize the truth because you had it you just see it ordered you know yeah. you you just have uh, the bricks that makes uh, transform it to uh, into words and language and concepts and this makes them for you understandable this means in the moment you say okay now I have the way you know to tell to myself exactly what I know and to tell it eventually also to others so I, even if I didn't knew it I was looking for these words to make a figure exactly to exactly these. these words I experienced a lot of time in my life to talk to people and to tell them things that I would have never said and actually to anybody I'm talking to I say things that I never said to anybody else. This means that this kind of conversation is completely unique. I never did this kind of conversation. I did other kinds of conversation, but very different. I mean, I'm not joking. This means that in this particular situation, this was exactly the kind of meanings that could have been expressed. And this is because of you. Uh, anybody else would have been completely different. No comparison possible. And. Um, and uh, this is an important uh, note. Sometimes I noticed that with some people I said things that I would have never imagined myself. Actually, I learned a lot when I was not joking. I, I learned a lot, you know, in a lot of situations because somebody extracted from me, which is not really true, uh, or let's say trans extracted from me the catalyzator of meanings that I had and that I didn't know. And so actually I learned myself a lot. For this reason I speak about creative resonance because actually it's not a one-way uh, uh, flow of information like they pretend to do in universities with yeah, professors see. that teach you something that they learn by heart which makes no sense and uh, then you don't understand it but you start to believe it and uh, which is not uh, or the not. Eh? Or, or not, not or not you know and, uh, and in this case you don't get a degree <laughs> Again, in the yeah. university I am uh, all over the world that's the, that's uh, the uh, function 
and uh, so you you know this is the the, the essence of communication you know it's a, something completely different from what uh, generally one somebody would expect the information is not flowing from one direction it's just catalyzed from somebody that has simply the tools to have put together yeah. and it's everything very interesting well actually I hope it's not boring at least it's not the universe if, uh, universe is evolving you know <laughs> you just said that right now okay it has evolved too much now <laughs> we have to go to the beauty contents and to yeah. see what to else see. it's happening <laughs> okay let's get to the beauty contents. Yeah.